Hello everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today I'm reviewing a new Sega Mega Drive clone console called the Mega Retron HD, made by Hyperkin. And so far, I'm liking this quite a bit. It's not perfect, but for 50 bucks, I think it's probably one of the best clone consoles out there. So this is a Sega Mega Drive, also known as Genesis, clone console that uses hardware emulation, and it features an HD output of 720p, with aspect ratios that can display in 6.9 or 4.3. It also features a multi-region switch for Japan, US, or PAL, and it has perfect ping technology that provides an awesome connection for your game cartridges. So it's time to open this thing up and check it out, and as far as the packaging goes, it seems to be really nice. It has really nice artwork, and it's put together well. And this console ended up being a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. I actually prefer it being smaller. It measures approximately 6.5 inches wide by 6.5 deep and an inch and 3 quarters high. So, so far inside the box we got the instruction manual and the console itself, but we got some more goodies inside here. We also get a premium controller. And this thing comes with a crazy long 10 foot cable, so you're not going to have to sit right in front of your TV. And it looks like there's still some more stuff in the bottom of the box, I just got to dig it out of here. And I believe this is going to be the cables. And that's cool. Looks like I get an HDMI cable, a composite cable, a micro USB cable, and an AC adapter. Now I did notice with that AC adapter, there's a note on the back of the box that some of these units may not come with an AC adapter, but it's not too big a deal. This is gonna be the same type of charger that you'd use for most of your smartphones. It'd be a five volt, one amp USB charger. As far as the looks go of the console, I think they did a pretty good job. It has some pretty good style to it. It's got an on off switch located right here. There's your cartridge slot with that perfect pin technology. And it's got the red and black colors, kind of like the original Sega Genesis Model 1. On the front here is going to be your reset button and your two controller ports. Then right here on the corner of the console, that corner is kind of cut off, giving it that dog ear effect. And this logo actually lights up when you turn the power on, and I'll show you that here in a few. On the back here is your micro USB input, your HDMI output, your composite output, and your aspect ratio display switch. And we can change that between 16.9 and 4.3. And if you want to use that switch, you got to make sure that console is turned off first before you change the aspect ratio. And on the bottom of your console is going to be your region selection switch, where you can change between Japan, US, or PAL. And as far as the construction of the case goes, it seems to be made of a fairly thick plastic, so it doesn't feel all cheap and flimsy. So if I was to describe how this looks compared to other Sega consoles, it seems to be a cross between three different consoles. It's got the coloring and the circle shape on the top like the Model 1 Genesis. It's got the rectangular shape and the cartridge location like the Model 2. And it has the square sides like the Dreamcast. The looks of this are obviously Sega inspired, and I like it. The controller has six buttons that resembles the original controllers that would have came with the Mega Drive or Genesis Model 2. Although this controller has a slightly more blocky or squared look to match the console better. And the construction of this seems to match the quality of the console, the plastic is nice and thick, and all these buttons feel nice and sturdy. And I would say this controller is above average. And I actually already own another Hyperkin controller that I bought a while back that's similar, but as you can see it's got a more rounded design like an original Sega Genesis Model 2 controller. And I would say this new controller that comes with the Mega Retron HD is the better controller. You can also use original Sega Genesis controllers with this console or vice versa. The cartridges seem to go on the slot like they should. I don't have to press down that hard to get them in there, and I don't have to pull them that hard to get them out. As far as the cartridge support goes, it seems to be really good. Every special cartridge I tried seemed to work. I tried a Multicart, Game Genie, Everdrive, Virtual Racing, and Sonic and & Knuckles, and they all worked well. And I tested all these in my previous video, and if you haven't seen that yet, I'll make sure to post a link down in the description below. For today, I'm gonna test a bunch of various different games, like this one, Troubleshooter. This is actually one of my most expensive games in my Genesis collection. And surprisingly, I've never played this game. So what better day to do it than today on my new console? And I actually found this game at Goodwill for only four bucks, along with a bunch of other Sega games, all at four dollars a piece. That was probably my best video game score ever. And if anyone is interested, I did make a video about that, and that will be down in the description below. And here's a look at that logo that lights up with a blue LED, and I really dig the way that looks. Okay, it's time to find out why Troubleshooter is so expensive. So as far as the emulation goes, after testing several games, the audio sounds awesome, but I have noticed one small issue. There seems to be a faint hissing sound that you can barely hear if there's a really quiet part in a game. But this really isn't a big deal, 
and you really gotta pay attention to hear it. But I just felt I should bring it up. Oh, and by the way, this game is not a letdown. You actually control two different people shooting. I can shoot forward and backwards at the same time. Plus you get all these special weapons. This game is actually a blast. And I'm actually mad at myself that I haven't played this game before. Now let's talk about the video output. The HD resolution looks really nice, but it's not perfect. I did do some split screen comparisons with an original Sega Genesis using SCART output with an HDMI converter, and I felt the SCART had slightly better results. And I will be demonstrating this towards the end of the video. With that being said, I'm still very impressed with the video output on the Mega Retron HD, and I have not noticed any type of audio or controller lag. The fact that this device is ready to go without any extra converters or cables is a huge plus for me. And that's really all I'm looking for in a clone console. I just want to be able to plug it in, be ready to play, look good, control good, and sound good. And that's exactly what this does. Oh, and speaking of sound good, this next game I'm about to test out has some really good music in it. This game is called The Lost Vikings, and this game does not disappoint. So for those of you out there that haven't played this game before, this is kind of a puzzle action game where you gotta use three different characters to make it to the end of each level. I find this game to be surprisingly addictive due to the great gameplay, graphics, and sound. And here's something I would like to mention. I will be testing out the 32X on this console, but I'm waiting for a special cable and that might not be here until next week. So hopefully when that shows up, I'll go ahead and give the 32X a test and maybe, just maybe, it might work. As far as the Sega Master System games, I was able to get those to work via an EverDrive cartridge, but the only way they would play was in composite mode. If I tried to play those in HD, the colors got all mixed up. Something out there that I had been wondering about whether it works or not is the Sega Master System Powerbase Converter. Unfortunately, I don't own one of these, but if anyone out there has one along with the Mega Retron HD, that'd be awesome if you could test it out and let me know if it works. And right now I'm playing with an aspect ratio of 4.3, but remember if you want to change that you got to make sure to turn the system off first before doing so. And this is what it looks like when I'm in full screen mode. Now I have noticed when I'm using composite output, I don't seem to be able to change the aspect ratio. It seems to stay the same no matter what I do. And I'll do some further testing with that, but it might actually be an issue with my TV itself. My TV when it receives a composite signal automatically sets the screen to a certain size, so that might be where the problem is. Out of all the games I've tested and played, the one that really surprised me was Virtual Racing. That's a game that I've never been able to play on any type of clone console. Virtual Racing has a special chip inside of it called the SVP, and as far as I know, that is the only game that ever used that technology. So it's good to see some effort being put into this console and having that game be compatible. And here's another game I've never played until today, and I believe this is called Out of This World, and this is very similar to a game called Flashback that is a little bit more popular, and I believe it's made by the same people. But although this game looks cool, I'm not the biggest fan of this game. The gameplay is kind of strange, and it has nothing to do with the performance of the console, it's just the gameplay itself. And what in the heck am I supposed to do right here? I thought, well, maybe I'm just supposed to run from him, but that didn't work. And here's Sega's answer to the very popular game Tetris. This is Columns. Oddly, I don't remember playing this game as a kid. I don't think I played it for the first time until I was in my 20s. So it's no surprise this was inspired by Tetris, but it's still a very solid game. And you can have even more fun playing in two-player mode. And as far as the gameplay goes on this console, it looks good and sounds good, and it plays just like it should. Now let's test out Shining in the Darkness, and this is an RPG that has some really nice looking graphics. When I was a kid, I didn't get into a whole lot of role playing games. By the time I got a Sega Genesis, it was a little bit later in the 90s, and I was more into fighting games, racing games, and stuff like that. And I was already addicted to games as it was, so it's probably a good thing that I didn't try some of these RPGs out like this, because I would have been severely addicted, and probably would have never left my room. When I was really young, I do remember playing a few RPGs, and I think the very first one I ever played was Dragon Warrior for the original Nintendo. And I remember having a lot of fun playing it, but I don't think I ever beat that game. So the last Sega Genesis clone console I purchased was the Sega Genesis Flashback HD that's made by AT Games. And I have heard a lot of people comparing Hypercon products to AT Games. And I can tell you firsthand, there is a gigantic difference in quality between this console and the Flashback HD. The Sega Genesis Flashback uses software emulation that's not so great, and it has noticeable lag that causes a stutter in the gameplay. Visually, it looks great, but the gameplay is just not so good. 
the Mega Retron HC uses hardware emulation that seems to be a lot more accurate. And just for your reference, so I'm not confusing anyone out there, all the footage that I've shown so far has been from the Mega Retron HC. So even though I feel the hardware emulation is far superior on this console, there is a couple downsides not to having software emulation. One of them would be that there's no save game state, so you can't save the game anywhere you want. If you want to save a game, you're going to have to use the regular battery saves like you could back in the day. Another thing would be is that there's not a lot of extra features. For instance, with software emulation, you usually get options for stuff like scanline filters, built-in cheat codes, multiple resolutions, and button mapping just to name a few. So with this type of hardware emulation, you're not going to get all the bells and whistles, but what you will get is solid gameplay, which is what should be the most important. With a lot of different clone consoles, I can immediately tell the difference between the gameplay on original hardware versus the clone. And with this console, the differences are very, very minor. Now I have noticed a couple of visual differences, and we'll talk about that on this next game, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So the gameplay with Sonic 2 is amazingly smooth, and the only issues I've noticed is some small visual differences. One thing that stands out is the shield that surrounds Sonic. If you pay attention close, you can see that there is a light flickering on the outside of the shield that's not present when you're playing on the original hardware. And another thing I found out while recording this is that if I'm not recording at 60 frames per second, the shield looks way off. So it's very important that the recording is at 60 frames per second or Sonic just looks like a big blue dot. So after discovering this, what I'm led to believe is that the frames per second while playing this game on the Mega Retron HD is not quite 60 frames per second. My guess is that the game is running at 58 or 59 frames per second, which is causing that light flickering on Sonic Shield. But like I said, that's just a guess and I cannot confirm that. So here is a side-by-side -side comparison with the Mega Retron HD on the left and the original Sega Genesis Model 1 on the right using SCART output converted to a 720 HD signal. And as you can see, there is no flickering on the shield on the SCART video. But I did find out that if you use the Mega Retron in composite mode, that that flickering stops. So it seems to be linked to when you upscale to the HDMI mode. So on the left right now, I'm in composite mode, and now I'm gonna switch back to HD mode and show some gameplay footage versus the SCART connection on the original hardware. Now the first thing you'll probably notice is that the SCART connection is just a little bit brighter, and maybe it's just a little bit too bright, but there's also a difference in the detail. If you look at the sharpness on the text, you can see some better detail on the SCART connection. As far as the gameplay goes, they play very close to identical. The differences I can see seem to be visual only. And it's not a huge difference. To see this, you almost have to see them side by side or an up close shot to tell the difference. And here's an up close screenshot of some of the text on Sonic 2 using the Mega Retron HD. And this is on the original Sega Genesis Model 1 with the SCART output. And as you can see, the text is a little bit cleaner. And now we're back to the Retron. Now, if you pay attention closely, look at the detail on the trees and the grass, and we'll see a difference when we switch to SCART. You can see a little bit more detail on those trees and the grass. So I would say the quality of the picture is a little bit better with the SCAR output. So here's my final thoughts with the Mega Retron HD. Overall, I am very happy with it. The sound and the gameplay in all the games I've tested has been amazing. The video output is also great, but as I showed you, it could be better. That being said, I still think this is one of the best clone consoles available to date. And for the people who can't afford the analog SG, this is a great alternative for only 50 bucks. Okay, it is time for me to go. If you like that video, please click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Facebook and Patreon. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.